It was a night of blinding snowstorm, where the wind screamed as if each snowflake was a cruel cut into the unforgiving sky. Oh, God. Please let the baby be born safely. Since ancient times, every child in the Fox Clan would be born with a magical number. This number was tied to their tails, determining their strength and partly the personality they would carry throughout their lives. Why is it just one tail? My child, why are you so different? What will your future be like? The baby who had just been born was Ahri. At the age of 10, Ahri saw someone who looked just like her for the first time, apart from her mother. That person was Arin, the current leader of the Fox Kingdom. However, Ahri's mother seemed uninterested in this fateful encounter. It's futile! As long as you and your daughter submit, we will ensure its safety. I will never submit to a wicked creature like you. The Icebox Clan will not fall because of me. Because of me. So, what are you planning to do? In the end, to protect the little Ari, her mother had to sacrifice her beautiful tails. As for herself, she created a snowstorm to sweep away the wicked demons. That was the first time Ahri experienced true pain. She became an orphan with a deformed tail. Ahri decided to go down the mountain to seek help in order to avenge her mother. The bustling capital city looked so strange in the eyes of the young girl. In the Fox Numerology Kingdom, there were nine clans living together. Each number was associated with a different personality and destiny. The three-tailed fire foxes were known for their liveliness and dynamism. The reliable four-tailed grass fox and the emotional eight-tailed water fox were quite harmonious together. In contrast, the six-tailed earth fox and the five-tailed wind fox were in fierce competition to prove their strength. The rebellious seven-tailed thunder foxes, on the other hand, liked to isolate themselves. Everything only ended when the ten-tailed light fox intervened to mediate. The two-tailed ice foxes, sensitive and fragile, had been wiped out by a catastrophe, leaving only Ahri as the last successor. What is this? An ice fox with just one tail? How peculiar! No one paid her much attention, because in their eyes, Aaron, the nine-tailed dark fox leader, was a very responsible person. Driven to a dead end, Ahri hid in a mouse hole to nurture the hope of revenge someday. Years passed, and the once frail Ari had been hardened by the harsh realities of life. She even became the queen of wanderers and misfits. Finally, the opportunity came when Aaron announced a selection competition for a special team. Growing up in the slums, fighting for survival day in and day out, Ari was initially very confident that she had no rivals. Until she met Amber, the Firefox. I won't go easy on you, you know. <laughs> Please! Oh. Ahri soon realized that, due to nurturing and proper education, Amber's skills were superior to hers. Oh. Oh. Although they tied in the end, Ahri had exhausted herself. What angered Ahri the most was that Amber always had friends who loved and supported her. Something the solitary Ari could never have. Huh? Uh. 
come on! Being in the final round is all right! Forget about oh. her! That's right. You're about to meet Lord Aaron as you've <laughs> always wished. The conflict reached its peak when Amber realized that Ahri had no respect for the leader she admired. However, ironically, they were grouped together to carry out the mission. Despite being enemies, Amber took action to help Ahri, setting aside their differences. Aren't you supposed to hate me? Yes! But we're a team! And I'm sure you have your reasons. We just haven't understood each other yet. I don't know what happened between you and Lord Aaron. As for me, he saved my family that year, so he's incredibly <laughs> kind to me. That's because you don't know the truth about him. That's right. Right or wrong, let's meet him together to find out. You could be wrong, and I could be wrong, too. <gasps> the location of the main competition was the ancient Ice Mountain. <gasps> it's strange. Where are the other groups? It means we're the first ones here. Let us scout ahead. What they couldn't believe was that the once mighty Fox Clan leader, Aaron, had changed. <gasps> no! <laughs> Don't act recklessly. <laughs> hmm? What's happening? That evil fox is trying to steal the tails of other foxes to gain immortal power. This competition is just an excuse. It's because of me. All because I didn't trust you. Your trust wouldn't have helped at this point, Amber. We need to defeat him and expose his crimes to bring justice to our friends. When they regained their composure, Amber and Ari realized that Aron's power as a nine-tailed fox was connected to darkness. That means he's weakest when the first light of day appears. Exactly! This is our only chance! The bond between the two <laughs> fox girls grew stronger from that moment. <laughs> Ari, who was familiar with the snowy mountains, took the position to distract Eren from the magical battlefield. Our little one has grown so much, hasn't she? I knew you would come back. You're just like your mother! You have no right to mention her! Is that all you have? You're still so weak! Ahri had no intention of fighting directly. She fled to prolong the time and lure Eren away from the battlefield. When Ahri's body could no longer withstand the strain, the first light of day appeared. The moment they had been waiting for had arrived. Without hesitation, Amber rushed at terrifying speed towards Aaron's weakening magical field. But they had underestimated the wicked fox. The fragile light was not enough to put him in a helpless situation. Realizing the imminent danger, Ari desperately broke the encirclement for her friend. However, it was too late. Amber, along with her friends, became prey to the magical field. Ahri, you can do it! Please carry on for us! No! No! Ahri was overwhelmed by the extreme pain that few could endure. She witnessed her loved ones leaving right before her eyes. Using the tails of other fox clans will only turn you into a demon like me. Adding one more tail, you won't beat me no matter what. 
No! I will never become a monster like you! Ah! Not one, not two tails. But when Amber's fiery red tail touched Aubrey's body, she transformed into an eleven-tailed fox, the number of the gods. Aaron's resistance caused two strong magical currents to collide, forming a strange connection. The spirits of Ari's mother and Amber appeared one after another, cheering Ari on from the sidelines. Mim, mother, Amber, hold on to it tightly. Ari, you're amazing. That's right. You're not like him. You're an amazing fox. Quickly defeat Aaron. But if I destroy him, everyone will also disappear. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm always by your side on every path. With that answer, Ahri's strength surged exponentially. The wicked fox, Eren, was no longer a match for You all! I will take revenge! The magical connection disappeared, but the spirits of Ahri's mother and Amber appeared, cheering her on. <laughs> Don't cry, be confident, and I will give you a gift. When the snow melted, the gift that her mother mentioned indeed appeared. We haven't been completely absorbed by Aaron, so we've come back, but it's a pity about your mother. I know, in fact, what remains is just an illusion. My mother merged into the beautiful snowflakes long ago. The battle ended, and the villain was punished. The Fox Clan celebrated <laughs> and unanimously honored Ari and Amber as protectors of the kingdom. From then on, they, Yay! along with their sacred friendship, <laughs> devoted their all to protecting the peaceful life of their people. Today's story concludes. Thank you for your support. Each view is a tremendous encouragement for us to create more interesting new stories. Don't forget to subscribe to Woa Fairy Tales to help us reach 1 million subscribers soon. Now, share with Woa Fairy Tales your emotions after watching today's story. See you in the upcoming episode! In a fairyland, there is a beautiful bird goddess, Eldora. A bird goddess is very popular and respected by the people. She possessed the magic of light, helping plants to flourish, as well as bringing warmth to the people in the cold weather. Therefore, she was considered a symbol of the guardian god here, so the days passed. Everyone lived in prosperity and warmth. <laughs> However, a great flood came and overwhelmed the people, leaving them helpless. Huh? Huh? In order to save everyone from being swept away by the flood, Eldora sacrificed part of her power to create a ring of light energy to protect the people. Huh? While she was exhausted, she was turned into a bird and drifted with the flood to the land of men. Huh? 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 When Eldora wakened up, she found herself in the care of a strange boy in a splendid room. Eldora tried to escape, but because of her lack of strength, she was exhausted and fell. Little bird, sit still. Otherwise, your wounds will get worse. Why are you standing there? Quickly get a cure for the little bird. Huh? Yes, my lord. Hmm. And you too! Prince Amaris, I am here out of pity for your little fate. To save your huh? life from the water. Huh? And you just woke up, wanting to escape. And if you're still stubborn and won't sit still and let me treat you, I'll leave you to the wild animals. This person is truly detestable. 
Every word that comes out of his mouth is full of bitterness, and he is also hot-tempered with everyone. Once I regain my strength, I'm certain that I will punish you to avenge for everyone. However, Eldora's words were like a bird singing, so the cold prince could not understand and still came to take care of her regularly. Gradually, Eldora realized that even though Amaris was a hot-tempered barren person, the inner nature was a good one. Moreover, every night she awoke with a start when she saw Amaris having nightmares, muttering that someone should not force him to go and woke up in fear, and that the deity also became more gloomy. At that time, Amaris went to Eldora's place and confided the life and death of human life to her as a way to dissipate the fear and fall asleep. Though I don't know who your nightmare is about, I hope that the power of my light can help you to dream a beautiful dream. Consider this my grateful gift to you. A few days later, Eldora's wounds finally healed, and she was eager to return to her own land to visit the people. Seeing Eldora's eagerness to fly away, Amaris hurriedly opened the window for her. Hmm. You are well again. You must miss your family. Whenever you wish, fly away. Although Eldora was disturbed when she saw Amaris's sad face, she was also worried about the people of her hometown, so she decided to leave. Sorry, Amaris. I will certainly not forget your grace, and if I have the chance, I will come back. After Eldora returned to the Wonderland, she was glad to know that everyone was safe. Huh? Goddess Eldora also returned healthy, and we are happy. It was thanks to a man who saved me that I was able to recover my strength and come back here. Ooh. Eldora then told everyone the story of herself and Amaris, as well as her worries about Amaris's nightmares. The people nodded to each other and consoled their goddess. We understand the goddess for the safety of the people, so we rush back to the land after recovering our strength. The old saying that if you are grateful, give back. So if you're so worried about Amaris, you should hurry back and visit him. While the goddess is away, we will take good care of ourselves and this place. Thank you very much. After I return the favor to Amaris, I will return and in that time, I will still leave half of my strength here to protect everyone. Eldora then parted ways with the people and returned to the palace where Amaris was sadly waiting for the little bird to return. At first, Amaris was happy to see Eldora, but immediately, he appeared cold and indifferent to her. However, Eldora was accustomed to these words and actions, so she still understood what the prince was thinking. Since the purpose was to repay Amaris, Eldora was always silently searching for clues about the dark smoke around him that time. However, Amaris also quickly noticed the abnormality in the room when he was absent one day. He pretended to leave the room and surreptitiously saw what was happening. Finally, he caught sight of the little bird turning into a beautiful girl and hurriedly held her back to ask questions. Who are you? Why did you turn into a little bird and search my room for something? I am the bird goddess of the Wonderland, and I came here to repay you for saving my life. Hmm. By finding out where the dark smoke of your nightmare came from and helping him to destroy it. Uh, but I don't want you involved in this because that smoke is death. Who will carry away my soul in a few days when I am 18. The death? Huh? It turned out that 15 years ago, Amaris's father, the king of this place, because he wanted to defeat the invading empire, protect the people, he signed a contract with death 
and agreed to exchange the first thing he embraced when he returned to the palace for her. The king thought this contract was too good because he only needed to hug the statue in the palace hall. <laughs> but did not expect that his only son, Amaris, because he was too eager to wait for his father to return. So he stood behind the door and hugged him. Then the king found him and begged death to spare his son's life. Huh? Huh? A deal is a deal, and I have never made an exception to that. Moreover, the king's son was very intelligent and would have been a powerful lackey for me in hell. The king insisted, even offering to trade his remaining life expectancy for the number of years Amaris would live. Okay, the life of the king is only 15 years, corresponding to the day Amaris turns 18. I will appear and take the soul of Amaris as agreed and leave. After that, Death disappeared in the smoke and waited for the day to bring the soul of Amaris to hell. Knowing his short destiny, Amaris had always treated everyone coldly since he did not want anyone involved and saddened about his death. Eldora promised Amaris that she would try to defeat Death to restore his life. If it were death, she would be afraid of the light. I will use my power to protect you. In an instant, Eldora sacrificed her remaining power of light and gave it to Amaris as protection. Him, there was nothing death could do. <laughs> However, Amaris was still worried about Eldora's appearance at that time, so he set out to find her. Hearing Amaris's prayer, Eldora's protector guided him to where she lived. Despite the hardships, Amaris did not give up hope of finding Eldora. As he approached, Amaris saw Eldora falling near the fairyland and hurried to hug her and inquire. Because before that, I gave you half of my power. So when this huh? blizzard came, I didn't have the strength and fall like that. <gasps> then I will give you the power of this light to heal you quickly. Ah, uh, Amaris, you put it on the ground and let me get it myself. This light is giving me a headache. But isn't light a symbol of strength? You should have been happy to receive it. Huh? Maybe you weren't. The fake Eldora smiled, transforming to Death's appearance, holding Chain from the underworld, heading towards Amaris to capture him. Please stop! Eldora! As it turned out, the real Eldora had heard strange noises outside, so she rushed to watch and was punished instead of Amaris.
Aldor, why did you do that? Because during the time I was with you, I loved you. A kind, caring person, always helping people. Therefore, I am willing to make a sacrifice in exchange for your happiness. Uh, no, I can't let you be carried away by death. Because through the past, I also realized I loved you very much. At that moment, their intense tears of love fell, creating a bright light and causing death to be knocked out. It seemed that everything was going well, but death was still trying to cast magic on Eldora to destroy her. However, Amara saw this and sacrificed his life to protect her. <laughs> At last, I have the soul of Prince Amaris. Hurry back to hell with me. However, death could not drag Amaris' soul to hell. It was because the love between Eldora and Amaris was so noble that his soul was already in Amaris' heart and could not leave. Why? Between two different races, two different people, two different missions, there exists such a close connection. Because it is love, a very sacred, profound thing that can defeat all difficulties and hardships in this life. Moreover, it is our differences that make this love so deep and inseparable. Witnessing this, Death greatly admires the couple's admirable sacrifice and returns Amaris' soul to freedom. <laughs> Thank you for helping me to understand how sacred is the love of all things. And I hope that you, Amaris, will continue to accumulate <laughs> virtues and create blessings so that you can live a happy hundred years with Eldora. Finally, Amaris and Eldora are together and happy forever after. Owning a pair of magical shoes that can do anything you want has always been a dream of many people. Among them, there is Princess Julia, a beautiful girl who is pursued by many boys and has the best dancing talent in the kingdom. Julia, however, was arrogant and unruly and liked her freedom because she was the king's only daughter. She was always ready to cause trouble, criticize other dancers, and even make them dance until they pleased her before they could live comfortably in the palace. When Julia reached the age to get married, the king introduced her to many young men, but she refused them all, saying that she only liked to dance. However, he worried about her future happiness without him, and therefore, he was determined to find her a suitable husband. Upon seeing her father's determination, Julia reluctantly proposed a plan that she thought was impossible for anyone to accomplish. So I have to wish that I want to marry someone with enough kind heart, enough talent, as well as bring me a pair of luxurious dancing shoes, go wherever I want for a moment, light as feathers, dance forever without breaking down to show my sincerity. Because he doted on his daughter, the king also agreed with Julia's plan and sent word of the requirements and ceremony for proposing to the princess. However, although there are many people who bring shoes made of crystal and silk, are not in line with the standards she set. As if no one could fulfill this request, a nomadic boy came to her and asked her to marry him. I am Hawk, a man who lives in a distant prairie. These rainbow shoes were personally woven by me from the feathers of rare mythical birds. They allow you to walk or even fly to any place in the blink of an eye, and will never wear out no matter how much you dance. Julia did not believe such shoes existed, but as a rule, she had to try them on. Just like Hawk had said, these shoes could do anything Julia had dreamed of. <laughs> While Julia still could not believe this fact, the king greeted his son-in-law cheerfully and wanted to see his face. However, all were stunned by his disembodied face. But the king's words could not be retracted simply because of the appearance of others, so we still gave mm. Julia and Hawk a marriage settlement.
I can't marry an animal like him. He doesn't deserve my beauty in this kingdom. But Julia, he's the only one who has the talent to make you rainbow shoes and fulfill all your requirements. I just don't want to... Julia, mm. although I understand you don't like his looks, you can't refuse to marry him for that reason. Therefore, I love you very much, but we need to know how to keep our word with what we have declared before. <gasps> However, Julia was still unable to accept the marriage and tried to delay it. Aha uh ha! -huh. These rainbow shoes can fly and take me anywhere, so it can help me escape just like no one else can catch me. <laughs> Thinking so, Julia then ran away into the sky to hide from her wedding. <laughs> However, Julia found herself struggling to find food. <laughs> and befriending clouds only added to her misery. Eventually, she became wary and started longing for her palace, which she had left behind. Plus, Julia had no idea that while she slept, the sun was slowly burning her shoes. With no more rainbow shoes, Julia lost her magic and fell out of the clouds. Fortunately, she was saved by a shadow when she fell into the deep sea. When she woke up, she was terrified because she didn't know where she was. She looked down and saw that her feet were injured and she couldn't walk as easily as before. Julia, don't move too much because your legs are... Keep distance! It's all because of your shoes that I came up with this. But why am I in your place? <coughs> a few days before the news came that you had run away with the rainbow shoes, hmm. the king was very worried and huh? very ill. <coughs> so I promised the king that I would look for you every day in the sky. Because I understood that the material of the shoes could not withstand the sunlight for very long. When I saw a light falling from the sky, I realized it was you and came to rescue. Julia understood that Hawk had saved her life, but because of her arrogant nature, she still denied it. Even so, don't think that's why I will accept you as my husband. Now take me to the palace. My father must be worried about me or... Make me some rainbow shoes so I can go back there myself. You don't have to worry about this because I don't like forced marriages either. But you don't want a husband who has talent and heart, so I'll prove it to you more for you to accept. Besides, huh? there's a snowstorm outside, huh? so stay here for a while and heal yourself. Huh? If you want another pair of shoes, huh? I will make them for you after the snowstorm huh? is over. Right now, the mythical birds have flown away to avoid huh? the cold, so I don't have the materials to make shoes. Therefore, huh? please stay here and rest until you recover. <gasps> This guy? Was he treated so badly by me and still worried about me? But though he is ugly on the outside and honest on the inside, I don't want to be bound to this marriage with a beast man like him. Besides, since my father is sick, I want to see him as soon as possible. Hmm? Julia pretended to agree. <laughs> mm. But in the middle of the night, she slipped away again. But as Hawk had said, it was a heavy snowstorm, and Julia could not easily return to the palace. Huh? Ah ha ha! Hey! When she tried to catch the carriage, they refused to give her a ride because they saw her dirty, pathetic appearance. So she still walked in the middle of the storm and inadvertently made the wound on her leg worse. Julia! Hawk's voice? Huh? Julia saw Hawk rushing huh? to her place and quickly gave her his shoes to keep warm. Huh? 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 Julia felt huh? touched by the kindness of Hawk, causing her to tremble a little. Hmm. Mm. Hawk, are you angry that I left of my own accord? No, 
since I understand that you are worried about your father, then I must go back to the palace at this time. Then, why would you want to marry a stubborn, unfulfilled woman like me as your wife? I used to be a very stubborn person, who only knew how to win or lose. However, in the end, I didn't have anyone who truly loved me. They only respected me because of my name, my position, or my appearance. After I realized this, I changed gradually and went to help people have a happier, more comfortable life. Huh? Hmm. Huh? Because, in mm. fact, everyone has some flaws, mistakes in their lives, like you or me. But instead of arguing, being stubborn, mm. we should know how to forgive each other and use our kind heart to empathize with them. That's when we truly mature and become free. Mm. So it turns out, after all this, I understand that stubbornness will only bring more trouble. I think I should start revising my own personality. Mm. Thank you. Well, seeing how much you long for mm. the palace, we have to overcome this storm. Huh? Mm. By the time they reached the mm. palace, the dancers who had been mocked by her had mm. deliberately taken the opportunity of her being wounded and challenged her to a dance. If she won, they would allow her to meet the king. Huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? Julia's leg is injured, so I'll take your challenge for her. <laughs> Afterwards, Hawk ignored the surrounding laughter and danced to the music, but Julia quickly joined in huh? his dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, your feet are still th Don't worry! Even though I was injured, I still believe that my dancing ability could defeat her. Besides, I don't want you to always be the one to suffer, so if you want to help, let's dance! Hawk saw the determination in Julia's eyes, so he agreed and danced to the music with her. <laughs> Not only that, but when Hawk was tired and exhausted, Julia was there to cheer him up, just as he had taken care of Julia before. Gradually, through the melodious dance, the two people gradually understood more about the feelings for each other. Meanwhile, the other girl's shoes break down and cause her to stumble. Hmm. <laughs> Seeing that scene, Julia suddenly remembered the important things Hawk had shared with her and how to inspire people with her heart. So, Julia took off her shoe and handed it to the girl. Why? Does the princess not only celebrate the victory, but also give me these shoes? Someone told me that, instead of always fighting each other, we should use our kind hearts to make them our friends. Besides, I understand that for those of us who like to dance, these legs are precious. So I want to challenge you once again, when we're both prepared for the best. <sighs> Princess, I don't know what happened to you in the past, but thank you very much for your kindness. Not at all. It's all because of my fiancé, Hawk. Hmm. Suddenly, the light of dawn fell on Julia and huh? turned into a pair of rainbow shoes for her. This miracle occurred at the very moment when Julia learned to give, something worthy was given to her. And these shoes mark the princess's growth as a more thoughtful person. <laughs> Julia was delighted and went with Hawk to visit the king and tell him stories of her experiences with him. <laughs> Julia eventually opened up, shared more with Hawk and finally, they had a true love, happily ever after. <laughs> Tell